Uh, good morning, Yasia. Uh, how are you? I hope that you are all going uh, on this day. Okay, uh, let's start quickly. Today it will be a revision on the lesson of the courses. Um, great news that it will be the last session in the courses. I know that you are fed up from this lesson. Okay, so it will be the last session. It will remain only the uh, reading homework. Okay, I will be giving uh, it to you uh, after the spring break. Okay, uh, and then I will uh, start a new lesson with you after the spring break. Okay, so let's start our lesson quickly. Okay, it's revision, and then we are going to solve uh, a page in your research pack. Okay. Okay, as we said before, that this, this lesson it's talking about the forces, and we said that how do things move? They move by forces, right? Okay, and we said that what does it mean by a force? A force it's the power that helps us to move the things. So force it's a power that helps us to move things. Okay, and as we said also, forces can be push or pull. You are pulling to your side okay or pushing away from your side you're doing an effort to push it away or you pull it to your side okay and then we said that push and pull they are opposite forces because you are pulling to your side and you are pushing away from your side so those are two opposite forces two opposite powers okay but we said that take care of the direction before and i said it many times take care of the direction for example in this picture as we said before they are moving in the same direction they are moving the box in the same direction this boy he is pulling the box in the left side or to the left side and this boy he is pushing the box also to the left side so take care am i talking about the force or i'm talking about the direction but the forces they are opposite the direction will differ either in, in it would be in the same direction or in the opposite direction okay okay then we said that why we are studying push and pull because push and pull it has important things it has important points what are they it makes things start moving if i want to start moving something which is standing still i will make an effort i will make power to it which is either to either to push it or to pull it then we said that if i want to stop thing from moving i will also push it or pull it okay i want to stop it okay the third thing why push and pull it's important because it changes the shape of the things either the slime the dough the play-doh if you want to change the shape if you want to make shapes you are pushing it and pulling it from all of the directions so you can make the shape then we said that number four why it's important because we change the direction of the things if you want to move something left right up down you are pushing and pulling this thing so you are changing its direction then we said that it makes things slower this the the shell of the snails the shell of the turtles they, those are making force and power on the animal so it makes it slower okay then we said the last thing why push and pull it's important because it makes things faster it can make the thing move faster okay so this is the push and pull then we came to another part which i can divide the forces push and pull okay but i can divide it also into balanced and unbalanced force what does it mean by balanced force balanced force means that they are canceling each other why because they are equal and have an opposite effect how those two boys for example they are one is pushing one is pulling okay and then you know one is pulling to his side and the other one he is pulling to the other side then he he's pushed and then he's pulled so they are canceling each other so they are equal to each other and each one of them to the left and to the right so they are having an opposite effect okay then the unbalanced force means that they are not canceling each other we said that they are not equal this is unfair why for example in this picture one boy and four boys are they equal no so they will not cancel each other okay so because they are not equal 
Then we said that heavy things need, or heavy objects, they need much more force, much more power to move them, okay? Because they are heavy, so they need much more power and much more force to move them. Then we said that there is something very important, which is called force meter. What does it mean by a force meter? It's the tool used to measure the forces. As we said that the thermometer is used to measure temperature, the ruler to measure the length, uh, all of those things, they are the tools to measure a thing, okay? So the force meter, it's a tool to measure the forces. Then we, ca we came to an important part. We said that forces, I can divide them into push and pull. I can divide them into unbalanced and balanced force. And then we came to the types of forces, magnetism, gravity and friction we said that magnetism it's the power of the magnet that can attract the things to it and we said that what does it mean by a magnet the magnet it has many shapes first either the circular or the round one the bar shape or the u shape and all of them they have a north pole and the south pole okay so what does it mean by a pole pole it means an end so each magnet it has a north end and a south end i received a very uh, important question from uh, from a friend to you in the circular or in the round magnet where are the two poles how can i decide where is the north and where is the south they are not having ends in the circle especially or in the round magnet they don't have ends one side is the north pole and the other side would be the south pole and you can test it if you are bringing two round magnets okay why if they are having the same poles or like poles or like sides now we we knew they will repel if they are having unalike they will be attracted as we're going to see now we said that like poles repel. Like poles means either north beside the north or south beside the south. Unlike poles attract means the north beside the south. So the like poles, they will be repelled. They will be away from each other. They will not attract. But the unlike ones, they will be attracted. They will be stuck to each other. Okay, so this was also the examples unlike poles attract and the like poles repel okay and we said that materials can be either magnetic or non-magnetic okay magnetic means that they are the materials that they are attracted that they are stuck to the magnets like what like the nickel the iron the cobalt and the steel and we said that there are non-magnetic materials which they are not attracted to the magnets. They are not stuck to the magnets like what? Like the wood, the glass, plastic and rubber and all other metals other than the magnetic ones which they are the gold, silver, aluminum and copper. Okay? And we took um, too many examples. Okay, please return to the video to know which one is magnetic and non-magnetic to make a practice to yourself. Okay? Then the last part in the magnets, we said that magnets can attract or not attract the things through solid liquids and gases. What does it mean by this? If I'm getting a paper clip and putting it in the air, air is a gas. So if I'm bringing a magnet and I get it beside this paper clip or I'm, I make it uh, near to it, will it be attracted to it? Yes, it will attract the paper clip. What about if I'm putting a paper or a sheet on the paper clip? Will the magnet attract the paper clip? Yes, it will. So the sheet is a solid. What about if I'm putting the paper clip in a jar or a cup of water? Can the magnet attract it through the water? Yes, it can. So the magnet can attract the things through gases or solids or liquids. Okay, make an example of something which is non-magnetic. For example, you are putting, I said before, a wooden spoon. Will the magnet attract it in the air? No. If I'm putting a sheet on it, will the magnet attract it? No. If I'm putting it in a cup of water, will the magnet attract it? No. So the magnet can attract or not attract the things, the materials, through gases, solids, and liquids. So we finished the forces push and pull. We finished it as balanced and unbalanced force. We finished the magnetism and then comes the gravity. What does it mean by gravity? 
Gravity, it's the force, it's the power that pulls everything to the ground. We said that you can see it, but it keeps you on Earth. What does it mean by this? Gravity, it's the power, it's the force that pulls everything to the ground, that keeps everything standing on the ground. Can you see the gravity? No, you are seeing its effect. What is the effect of the gravity? That you are standing still, you're not flying like in space. So the gravity is the force that helps you to stand still, to pull you on the ground and to pull everything to the ground. And of course you can see it. Without that, there is something important, which is the weight. What does it mean by weight? Weight, it's the measure of the pull of the gravity. How can I measure the gravity if I can see it? I can measure it, the force or the power or the pulling effect of the gravity by measuring the weight. Someone is measuring 20 kilograms, someone is measuring 50 kilograms, something is measuring eight kilograms. So the weight, it's the measure of the force or the power of the pull of this gravity force. And we said that if something having much more mass, it is heavier than the other object, so it pulls the thing, uh, the gravity pulls it much more. It, it takes much more gravity to pull it. If something having much more mass, much more weight, so the gravity will be much more pulling it to the ground, okay? So again, we finished the forces as push and pull, we finished it as unbalanced and balanced force. We finished the, the magnetism and we finished the gravity. Then we are going to come to the friction. What does it mean by friction? Friction, it is the force, it is the power that when two objects, they rub together. It happens when the two objects, they are rubbing together between two surfaces. It doesn't happen alone. It happens when two objects are up together or they, it happens, sorry, by to, or between two surfaces. And this friction force or this friction power, it causes the things or the objects to slow down. And comes a very important part, which is there are some materials that can make rubbing the objects faster. What does it mean by this rubbing objects faster means that they are having lower friction, that they are having lower friction, like the what, like the oils. As I said before, the oils or the, or the water, if it is on the ground, okay, and then so the ground and it has oil, so those are the two things. And then comes you either with your socks or with your shoes, you're gonna do what? Slip. Why? Because the oil or the water, it makes the rubbing object faster. It rubs you or it rubs your shoes or rubs your socket between you and the surface of the ground faster. It means that it has lower friction. Okay? And then there are some materials that can slow down rubbing the objects like the rubber or sandpaper and I give you the stones. How, if you are, uh, if there is a sandpaper on the floor also, and then you come with your shoes or with your socks, what happens when you step over them? You will find yourself that you are slowing down. It means that it has higher friction. You can't st step over it and then you cannot slide. Why? Because it has high friction. Okay? Okay. So forces, they can be balanced and unbalanced. Push and pull. And then we said that important part, which is the magnetism, gravity, and friction. Then the last thing, forces can be non-contact or contact. What does it mean by this? Non-contact means that you are not touching anything. This is not your effort. You will not do anything. Like the word gravity and magnetism. If you are having a magnet and you are getting near to a magnetic object, or magnetic material, will you be deciding to attract it or not attract it? No. The magnet, it will decide. If it's magnetic, so it will attract. If it's non-magnetic, so it will not attract. Okay? So you are not doing anything. So this is non-contact force. Gravity, also, can you do anything in the gravity? Can you touch it? No. Gravity is pulling you to the ground and keeping everything standing still. Are you doing anything? No. Are you contacting with it? No. So non-contact forces means that you are not touching anything. You, this is not your effort. Like the gravity and the magnetism. Contact forces means what? That between two objects that touch each other, like the friction. 
okay? So the, the two objects that they are touching each other, there is a contact between them, okay? Between those two objects, they are touching each other. So they are making either high friction or low friction. There is a touch, there is a contact between them, okay? Okay, so this is the first lesson, push and pull, balanced and unbalanced, magnetism, gravity, friction, and then the contact and non-contact forces. I hope that you understood it well. Okay, if you are you're having any questions, please send it to me on your Google Classroom, okay, as your friends they are doing. Now we are going to come to solve the, the last page in your resource pack in this lesson, and then the reading homework, it will be after the spring break, okay? Okay. Here are some words that they are in the box. We are going to use them to uh, fill in, in the missing spaces, okay, uh, for each uh, sentence, okay? I will read with you the words and then we are going to read the sentences. You're having balanced A, B force, C friction, D gravity, E magnet, F repel, G unbalanced, H weight. Number one, forces on an object that cancel each other out because they have equal and opposite effect equal opposite effect cancel each other those are the three keywords so it will be a it will be the balanced force number two a push or pull it will be of course the force b letter b number three to push away what does it mean by to push away it is the f means repel, repel means that it is pushing away, it's not attracted to the magnet. Number four, a force that occur when objects rub against each other, this is the key word, rub against each other, it will be friction, yes. Five, a measure of the amount of gravity between two objects, measure is the key word, and then he's saying to you measure of the gravity, so it will be the Yes, it will be H, the weight. Six, an object with magnetic force. Something that is having magnetic force. It will be the E, the magnet. Seven, when forces on an object don't cancel each other. This is the key word. Do not cancel each other. So it will be the D, unbalanced force. Eight, the last one. A pulling force between two objects, such as between you and the earth. We are having keywords. Pulling force, then between you and the earth. So it will be the Z, it will be the gravity. Okay. Thank you so much, okay, uh, for, for this lesson. I hope that you understood well the forces. Uh, please do your all, all your classworks, okay, solve it uh, with yourself. Don't forget that you are having a quiz on Thursday. Okay, please study well. It will be up till the magnetism as I wrote on your model. Okay, it will be up till the magnetism part. Okay, thank you so much and have a nice day.